everyone. I hope you managed to find the secret coffee station. Uh, I know I needed it for sure. Uh, we're still here. So today we've talked about a bunch of different things uh, already. Uh, in the morning it was mostly about discoverability and monetization. Um, and then we had a lot of very technical talks. I think one part that we haven't spoken about enough, even though it was mentioned a bit, is uh, file size. Um, and that's what I'm going to talk about, specifically that size matters and how loading is losing you players. So I guess for most of us, we understand that long loading times are probably pretty bad for user experience, but it might be hard to see how bad it is exactly. So let's talk about that. First, a quick introduction. Uh, my name is Kasper Moll. I'm a game tech engineer for Pokey, and I have been for the past five or six years. Um, and Pokey is a web gaming platform. So it's existed for 10 years, even though it wasn't always Pokey. And in the past, at the start, we were just an uh, like ordinary game aggregation website with mostly Flash content. But over the past years, we've become more of a multi-sided platform. And why that's mostly relevant for this talk is that we work together with a lot of developers. So instead of just taking content random places from the web, we work together directly with developers and uh, help them make success on the web. So some of these developers are big studios. And you might know some of them, like Kilu, who are the creators of Subway Surfers, or Hipster Will, who are the creators of Crossy Road. But next to these bigger studios, we're also very proud of the smaller studios, independent developers that we work with, um, some of which are even making their living on the web today uh, on our platform. So uh, again, size matters. I'll be talking about two specific things. Mostly, I'll be exploring some loading data. And then secondly, I'll quickly scan over some opportunities I think are there. So ex on exploring loading data, I'm going to be looking specifically at two concepts. So it's important that uh, we speak the same language there. Uh, I'll be looking at conversion to play uh, versus initial download size. And conversion to play can mean a bunch of different things. So in this case, what it means is how many players remain for each player that starts loading a game. So if 100 players start loading your game and 50 remain at the end of your loading screen, that means you have a conversion to play of 0.5 or 50%. I'm only talking about the initial load here. So no post loading, no onboarding, no platform drop off, those kind of things. It's purely the initial loader of the game. And then the initial download size it's just the amount of megabytes that's downloaded in this period. For the data set, we'll be looking at 174 of our games. This is a subset of our games uh, that have our latest SDK integrated, which allows us to look at this data. I'm only going to be looking at desktop data. The main reason for that being that um, our size split is way more varied on desktop. If you look at our mobile web content, all the games are significantly smaller across the board, so the data is less interesting. And we'll be looking at two weeks of data here. I do want to give a small disclaimer. We've only recently got this architecture up and running to start looking at this data, so it's very early explorations, but I think it's interesting nonetheless. So again, conversion to play versus initial download size. Here is a graph where all these games are mapped. And it's important that this is only the United States. You have to look at a specific region because internet connection makes a big difference for this. So if you look at a global chart, you don't really know what you're looking at. So on the left, you see the conversion to play, which ranges in this chart from 0.3 or 30% to 1 or 100%. And then at the bottom on the x-axis, you can see the initial download size, which ranges from zero all the way up to 120 megabytes. All the black dots are one of the games. So first impression from this chart, for me, it doesn't look great. So 
we've been looking at specific games for a longer time, looking at their drop-off rates or their conversion rates. And we've known there is a problem here, but we've never really looked at multiple games at the same time. And to me, web is really about easy access. Like, it should be easy to access games uh, and quick. And this doesn't look to me like easy web access. So for example, if we, okay, this is the actual chart, so I don't know what, sorry. If we look at the 10 megabytes mark, which I think is already, it can be a pretty difficult target to hit for game developers, especially with the standard set with mobile games and if you're using pre-existing engines, those kind of things. Even in the United States, a 10 megabyte game only reaches a conversion to play of about 80%. That means that, again, even ignoring your game's onboarding or even ignoring the discoverability of your game, those kind of things, if 100 players in the United States find your game, they click on your game, they want to play your game, 20% uh, of them will just leave during the loading phase. That's pretty substantial. And then this is the United States. The United States has pretty good internet connection speeds. What happens when you start looking at different markets? Well, the problem gets bigger. So first of all, all these charts now range from zero to one conversion to play, which is why the United States graph looks different. I had to do that because otherwise the other ones wouldn't fit. Um, Brazil is a pretty important market for us. Egypt is not, but it illustrates uh, the problem quite clearly. If you take the same mark that we did before, the 10 megabyte mark, then we're in the USA, we are at a 0 0.8 or 80% conversion to play. In Brazil, that already drops to 70%. And in a country like Egypt, it drops below 60%. So once again, if we're talking about discoverability being a problem, even if people are finding your games and you're serving them a relatively reasonably sized game of 10 megabytes, compressed that is, so it's 10 megabytes compressed, you're giving that to them in Egypt, you're already losing almost half your players just through the loading screen. So I think this is what I mostly want to drive home year, um, the file size of your games really does make a big difference. And I think there's a lot to be gained here. So what can we do? I think there's two main things we can do. And one of them is educating game developers. And I think we haven't spoken about the developers enough yet. Especially this area of the charts all the games upwards of 10 megabytes, all the way up to 120 megabytes. This is mostly about educating game developers. We can do all we want with creating the best tech and making all the best tiny optimizations and those kind of things. But in the end, that won't make a 120 megabyte game a 40 megabyte game. The good news is most of these games have a lot of low hanging fruits and post loading is a big one there. Um, I've looked at these games and I can tell you for sure that if you're playing a first person shooter, you do not need to download all 10 maps straight away, especially if you're only gonna play for five minutes. So there's a lot to be gained here. Secondly, I think it's important we start teaching people, and that includes ourselves, to look at the web and look at these games with in real world conditions. So use the throttling function on your computer. Use your throttling function on your uh, dev tools. In our office, we have a specific network set up which makes the internet basically unusable by significantly reducing the, uh, the connection speeds, and it's horrible. Um, but it very clearly illustrates the problem, which is easy to be blind to. Because from my computer, if I download a 50 megabyte game, it might take if I'm unlucky, it might take half a minute, but probably less. It's not that bad, but 
once you start looking at these conditions, some other people are trying to load your games in. It's quite surprising even so many people get through it at all. And then finally, which I think is very interesting, is to create more games web first. And this can be a pretty tough ask for people, uh, mostly because of the uh, incentive reasons we've been talking about, like discoverability and monetization. But it does make a huge difference. So previously, I mentioned Crossy Road by Hipster Will. We advised them and helped them remake their game for web in 3.js, where it was originally a Unity game. And where we estimate the Unity game to have been anywhere between 20 and 40, 40 megabytes, if we would have exported it like that to the web, the remake launched uh, below two megabytes. And if you look at the curve, that means maybe we saved up to 20 or 30% of the potential players there. Then secondly, which might be more relevant for the group in the room is improving the web. And I think this is mostly relevant for this area. So the games that are already pretty well optimized, the games that are already 10 megabytes or five megabytes or anywhere in that region, I think this is where the game engines or the browser vendors uh, or the platforms can make a difference by doing these low level optimizations or reusing code or those kinds of things. So that's basically it. Don't forget that size really does matter on the web. And um, I'm looking forward to talk more with people on this subject. Thank you.